Joseph Harvey and I'm Medical Director of Pioneer Christian Hospital here in Infondo, Republic of Congo. Hi, I'm Rebecca Harvey. Um, we're here at Pioneer Christian Hospital, but it's known locally as Hôpital Evangelique Le Pionnier. That's um, Evangelical Christian Hospital, Pioneer Christian Hospital. Um, because we're here in Republic of Congo and the official language is French. So we speak French or we speak Lingala. So Pioneer Christian Hospital is only for people who speak English. We're in the northern part of the country in the rainforest and we're here at the hospital which was um, a former communist youth camp that was turned over to us to transform it into a Christian hospital in 2001. The hospital opened in 2006 so we're just about ready to celebrate our 15th anniversary this January. And uh, we are a 65 bed hospital uh, with maternity, medicine, surgery, pediatrics, lab, x-ray, ultrasound, pharmacy uh, departments. So growing up, I was saved. I asked Jesus into my heart when I was seven and grew up in the church and loved missionaries. I loved when they came to speak and I made a commitment actually when I was in high school to be a missionary. I walked forward in front of the church and said, I'll go anywhere God sends me. And when I went to college, I met this young man and he happened to ask me on our first date what I thought about missions. So I told him how I was very open to that, but I didn't have any specific call. Turns out that was the right answer because this man, my husband, Dr. Joseph Harvey, when he was about seven years old, had a call to missions, very specifically to the Republic of Congo to be a medical missionary. When I was in third grade, God called me to be a missionary doctor to the Republic of Congo and I accepted his call upon my life and so all my life I've been planning to come here and serve as a missionary physician. Uh, when I first came, I thought of doing mostly public health work because I thought that would be the best way to impact the health of a nation, but it turns out uh, no curative care was available, no primary, secondary, tertiary care, uh, very little was available in this region and God laid it upon our heart to start a hospital uh, so that we could uh, take care of women who were instructed, obstructed labor, needed a C-section, or uh, somebody, you know, you might be, all the prevention in the world isn't gonna prevent all cases of appendicitis. So eventually most people at some point in their life need a hospital. And here there was no uh, functioning hospital to any uh, level of, of care that uh, would meet the needs of the people around here. So we're, we've been a privilege to be able to be a part of what God has done here, bringing to, together the dreams that he gave me as a child. Uh, it's been a real opportunity, a blessing. When I found out he was going to the Congo, maybe I didn't mean anywhere in the world because when I thought of going to Africa, um, it actually was a bit daunting and I wasn't sure I wanted to do that. So that was a whole process of decision and I brought it before the Lord and there wasn't another decision point in my life when I decided that, yes, God, I would like to follow you anywhere. And if that means following this guy to Africa, I'm certainly willing to do that. And I can look to that actual day when I made that decision. And that's a memorial stone of sorts in my life that I look back to when it gets hard. It's good to remember that we were both, Joseph and I, called very specifically to this country, to this place, to serve God in the medical field. So we, since I was called as a young boy to be a missionary doctor, I just went straight through school and college and medical school and got a combined degree program in medicine and public health and tropical medicine. And then I did family practice residency. And then we came right to Congo within six months of finishing, completing residency. I graduated from Houghton College where we met and then afterwards went on to get my RN. So I'm a registered nurse. Um, most of my years I spent, I say doing a practicum in nursing. Um, I had four babies. <laughs> so I did a lot of nursing, my babies. Um, over the years, I've supported the hospital, not in a direct nursing role, but now that we're empty nesters, I'm finding that I'm getting to be more involved in the hospital, and that's fun too. Overall, God, God has been incredible at working many miracles and bringing together so many projects and so many um, opportunities 
to meet uh, people's needs complete holistic uh, needs body soul and spirit um, one of the funnest things for us has been starting a christian radio station we now have a 200 foot tower with the fm radio station that beams out a 100 mile radius um, where we can follow up with our patients that come to Christ at the hospital and return to their village. They might not have a church or a pastor, but now they can listen, if they have a radio, they can listen to the Bible, uh, study the God's Word every day, and also listen to um, public health programs that we are able to transmit over the airways. That's, so that's been a really exciting uh, aspect of this ministry that's developed over the years. So another um thing that we have done that's not going to fit for everyone is we have four children and as I said two were born here in Congo and we homeschooled them up until they graduated from high school and went to college. That's not going to work for everybody um, but for us it was it was perfect. But the most important thing again in, in making those kinds of decisions is listening to what God is saying for you. So for us having our kids with us um, throughout our whole ministry has been amazing. It's, I, if asked, you know, what's my, some of the greatest blessings about being here on the mission field, I would have to say just what it did for our family. Um, being able to raise kids here in a, in a place where it really is a, I think it's a privilege to live in a place where you go without. There's been plenty of times when we've had to go without something that we wanted, or we've had to wait for it, and we've had that pleasure of anticipating it coming, and the disappointment of it not being there, and then the joy of it coming later. And I, I really mean it when I say that it's a privilege to go without. I think it's really cool that one year for Christmas I bought my I think probably 15 year old daughter, a box of cornflakes in the capital city and gave it to her for Christmas. And she was thrilled and got the Sharpie marker out and wrote her name on them so nobody would steal them. She appreciated that box of cornflakes like she never would in America or in a place where there is just an abundance. Raising our family here in the jungle, in the, trop in the inundated tropical rainforest, in a town in the middle of the rainforest, was a great experience for them and great gave them a wonderful insight about how to get along with people, how to work with people from all over, um, and just growing up with, with all the volunteers that have come, usually 60, on average 60 people a year come to help out at the hospital from all over the world. And our kids have been exposed to that growing up, and now they're all, they all have the desire, the same desire to serve God wherever He leads them, and to use their, their profession, their calling, uh, as a service for, for the the poor, for the needy, and for those who need the good news of Jesus Christ. So some of the biggest challenges have been, uh, uh, so some of the biggest challenges that we've had in developing this hospital have uh, been the growing pains that we've gone through as the hospital becomes more mature in its administration and functioning and uh, work, uh, setting up the different services and the different aspects of the ministry. It's been challenging at times to get everybody on the same page and working on the same team. And uh, God has seen fit to see us through a lot of hard times, a lot of challenges from both within and without. And, and uh, we've, we've been able to make it through those and we're looking forward to the great opportunities currently for the future to continue to impact the health of a nation. And the neat thing is by being here, by keeping this hospital going, uh, we are ministering to not just the nation of the Congo, but many other nations, uh, people, groups that come to this place for hope and for healing and for health care. Uh, can't even count the number of, of nations of people, people that they have come from and been treated here from all over the world, really. I mean, we're just a little tiny spot in the middle of one of the last densest tropical rainforests in the world and yet there are a number of people that pass through and often are in need when they do pass through this place. We've been lacking and we're so glad to have be a part of this organization that understands um, mission hospitals. They're unique from other hospitals. They're unique from other mission works. Um, medical missionaries are kind of a interesting breed and 
Um, Greg and Candy, the, the founders, seem to really get that and they care very much about supporting the missionaries. And we feel very supported um, emotionally, like they've got our back and we know they're praying for us, but they also practically provide solutions. They look, how can they be getting supplies to us? How can they be recruiting uh, personnel? Um, how can they be helping in times of crisis? How can they be helping write grants, raising money for the hospital? So there's just a lot of very helpful support with Christian Health Service Corps. So for, after 20 years serving with uh, one mission, we, we ended up uh, wanting to, to switch to Christian Health Service Corps. And the reason was that Christian Health Service Corps it specializes in supporting and sending and training and supporting and sending uh, missionary doctors, nurses, professionals overseas to work in mission hospitals. So we have over 72 doctors now in 30 mission hospitals around the world. And it was so fun to become a part of a family of other uh, doctors like myself who are doing very similar things all over the world to have that camaraderie and also the mission is very aware of what our needs are as professional uh, medical missionaries what our needs are and, and to help provide for those including continuing medical education and, and member care member support and even uh, health insurance and other things that they help us with evacuation insurance uh, we really are glad to be a part of the christian health service corps family and uh, it, it is it, it does seem like it's become to me like an elite core uh, of special forces for missionary medicine and uh, I'm really grateful for Christian Health Service Corps and for God leading us to that organization. We are here because God called us and we want to be faithful to Him and also we, God has developed in us an incredible love for the Congolese culture, for the Congolese people, uh, the many different people groups that are, there are 67 languages spoken in this country so that's a lot of different groups of people and yet God has given us a great uh, compassion and love for them and we like to just act that out by meeting physical needs and, and sharing the good news, praying with patients almost every day with almost every patient. It's a really a, a great privilege and opportunity. I always ask permission, would you, would you be okay with me praying for you? And very rarely does anybody say they don't want their doctor to pray for them. And I love committing their situation to God because often I don't have all the tools that I, I would be used to in the U.S. Uh, or in the, in the developed world. I don't have all the x-rays or scans or lab tests that normally I would like to rely on. And so I love to commit that situation, their diagnosis, their treatment plan to God. And so often when I just pray a quick prayer in the office, I might come up, uh, be reminded of something during that prayer and end up changing my prescription a little bit or adding something. It's just, it's, it's a blessing. And sometimes even the patient will remember something and say, oh doctor, I was wondering about this. or. Did you know that I'm on that medicine? You know, so it's just neat that God uses that time just to pause and to commit the situation to Him. And it's been a real blessing to see how that blesses people and it blesses me. No matter where you are, whatever your situation, you really have to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus and not on men. Um, it's, it's not just a platitude. You really have to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. And you have to be willing to not be appreciated you have to be willing to be misunderstood. You have to be willing to do good and people say you're doing bad. Um, so I guess that's, that's advice for, for new missionaries maybe thinking, uh, considering coming on the field. You really have to um, keep your expectations open. We always say we want our missionaries to be fat. And that stands for flexible, adaptable, and teachable. And that's really true. And the thing is, you, you may think your expectations, you don't have any, but you always have some. And so just expect to have your expectations blown away. Come to the mission field ready to serve and not be served. Um, come knowing that you will be uncomfortable. And you will be uncomfortable in ways you didn't think you would be uncomfortable. You might think, oh, there's heat or there's bugs and that's gonna be uncomfortable. But you may not expect something like your neighbor always telling you how to raise your children and criticizing you for things or 
you know, the little things about going to the store and always being kind of like accosted by the people who are selling and just calling you, hey, white person, come buy my stuff. I mean, those things are just mundane and daily, but those may be the things that are really hard. Um, so just know you will be uncomfortable and be willing to be uncomfortable. Remember to take breaks. <laughs> Remember um, to, as I said, keep your spiritual life intact and keep your eyes on, on Jesus. Don't look around you, don't worry about what other people are thinking, um, but remember it's God who's called you here and you need to please Him foremost. So that's probably the biggest advice. I sort of hesitate to give, quote, advice because we have done things in sort of an unconventional, um, non-standard way. So I feel like my advice isn't going to fit somebody else. But that's kind of the point. Everybody's story is different and everybody's circumstances are different. So as if, if you're someone looking to go on the mission field, you need to just follow the Holy Spirit's leading for you. Because God has created you with a specific set of skills and passions. So you need to be in the right place, the right time, with the right sending organization. So make sure that that's a good fit for you. And it's only God who really can lead you in that. You know, for example, when we were looking to come to the mission field, we came straight to our field of service. We came straight to Brazzaville in Congo to learn French. And I wouldn't necessarily recommend that or advise other people to do that because it's often good to do it in another country where you can get the language very much more solidly before you come to try to serve. But within two months, it was really clear that's where we were supposed to be. There was a bunch of stuff that happened, including a missionary dying and Joe needing to be there as a doctor to help the family and to help at care for this person. It just became really clear that's where we were supposed to be, even though it wasn't the recommended way to do it. Um, we have just done things, I would say, following God's leading and so that's what I encourage you to do um, if you are looking to come on the mission field um, you need to really hear what God is saying to you our biggest needs are well it's always the biggest need is long-term medical staff like a surgeon we can really really use a long-term surgeon um, but other primary care specialties also we could definitely need, use help long term you think about it at our hospital, we have one doctor, uh, average, you know, one doctor for every 300,000 people. Um, in New York State, where I'm from, it's more like one doctor for every 2,000 people. So we need more doctors. And, and a hospital this size, 65 beds, I mean, we can definitely have a medical staff of 12. Uh, now we have two, so that's a great blessing. We used to have just one for five years, but now we've got two. So we need medical doctors that are trained, that learn, take the time to learn the language and can work independently without a translator. Although we do have translators available for short-term workers and in the interim as people are learning, adjusting to the environment. Uh, we could use nurses. We definitely need nursing instructors because we would like to restart our nurses training program. We've had four different uh, groups, cohorts of nurses that have been trained here at the hospital and they've become very wi widely sought after in the country, uh, end up working other places because they're so sought after. We need uh, nursing educators to help us restart the nursing school. Feel called to come to Congo, well, this is the way you can find out. If, if you are willing and you're able, that probably means you're called because there's a lot of people that are willing but they're not able. There's a lot of people that are willing, uh, willing but they're not able. There's a lot of people that are able but they're not willing. So if you have that rare combination of being, being both willing and able to come over to Pioneer Christian Hospital and help, then perhaps you should apply. We'll, we'll check out and see if you might be a good fit. And uh, God may be calling you to serve here long term or, or short term. We need both.